we have a window. <laughs> so it's been a bit of a stressful day. You wanna go to Canada? You wanna go to Canada? You wanna go to Canada? We are leaving the lower 48 in two weeks to head up to Canada and then Alaska, which is crazy exciting, but we have a bit of van prep to do before we go. We're currently in Seattle, Washington, which is where we called home before we hit the road, and we're spending the majority of our time here knocking out a bunch of tasks. And first up, we're finally gonna fix our window. If you missed what happened to our window, we'll put a link to the video that explains everything below, but over the last month, we've been using this plexiglass with black duct tape over it. It's been working out really well, but about a week ago, we picked up our new window from the Sprinter Store Parts and Service near Portland, and we've been waiting for a non-rainy day, a nice dry day to install this window, and if you know anything about spring in the PNW, it can be a challenge. First things first, we gotta get this old plexiglass off here and all this tape. Tape's holding it on more than the adhesive we <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, plexiglass window. You held up very well in the rain and in the snow, but we are not sad to see you go. So I bought these plastic scrapers with like these replaceable blades here, and I'm just trying to getting started on taking off all this old the stuff we put used to put the plexiglass up and then also the old adhesive for the real window. And in case you're wondering, today's window project is coming at you from Walmart because they had the biggest parking lot we could find. And it's very fitting because we've slept at many Walmarts in this van, but the good news is right across the street is a Lowe's. So if we need anything, it's just a quick walk away. having one heck of a time getting the silicone off with this just this little plastic scraper so we read that using a blow dryer would help we've also been using some alcohol the alcohol kind of works but now i'm using this blow dryer and it's coming right off it's way way easier how many of those have you broken now probably about six or seven now they just snap right in half it is working better as you can see it's kind of coming off in one tape but that part wasn't warm enough yet Kona, are you worried? Worry wart, Kona. She's very worried. Getting the adhesive off is taking much longer than we thought it would, which is kind of a theme with every single van project. So I'm not sure why we haven't learned that lesson by now and why we're surprised, but we're getting very, very hungry and hangar and van projects do not mix. So I'm whipping up some quick tacos to fuel us up so we can get through this without eating each other. Oh, heck yeah. <laughs> Dang, these look good. So I cleaned off as much of the silicone and the old adhesive as much as I could. And so now I am wiping it down, kind of cleaning it up with isopropyl alcohol. So it has like the best surface for to stick. I'm also gonna wipe some alcohol on the window again. So it has a really good clean sticky surface. Lined up on this side. Yeah. Oh my god, we have a window. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's like push in and like up a little bit. Yeah. So we have a problem. So when I ran into that dang bush, it left a dent. It kind of pushed in the framing of the window here. I can see there's a little gap in there. I tried to load it up with the adhesive, but it's uh, I can see sunlight coming through it. So we're gonna try to peel it off. The guy at the sprinter store said you can if you do it quick enough. Uh. 
not ideal, but... How is it? There. Really? Yeah. So I shoved a Q-tip up in there, kind of spread it around a bit, and it looks like the gap is gone. So I think we'll be okay. I guess the real test will be next time it rains, which will probably be tomorrow. <laughs> Now we're going to let it sit for three hours before we drive anywhere so that it can harden up and be safe and road ready. We have a new window! Oh, thank goodness. <laughs> oh, it feels so good. I have never been so excited to see a window and I am just so happy this whole window saga is over. We promise, we promise to never back you into a bush. <laughs> I promise, I promise, I promise I'll never back into a bush again. I promise I won't do it again. <laughs> Our least favorite van task is getting any sort of work done on the van. One, because it's usually very expensive. And two, because this is our home, our only vehicle, and we have a dog. So basically what happens is we have nowhere to go and we kind of get stranded and we have to figure out what to do with Kona. And if they need the van for more than one day, then we have to get a hotel. So it's just always usually a pretty big headache. So today we're getting the oil change, the fuel filter replaced, possibly the brakes. We'll see when we get there. And then we're also going to get a good inspection all around the engine, make sure it's good to go for us to get up to Alaska and get back safely. We're having the work done at Sound Auto Care just outside of Seattle. We're not taking it to a Mercedes dealership because they usually charge way more money. In the past, we've just walked around aimlessly with Kona for hours while we've waited for the van work to get done. But as you may be able to tell, it is raining today and there's nowhere to walk around in the area we'll be in. So we're boarding Kona for the day and our plan is to get an Uber and go to the library so we can get some work done. libraries because one they are free two they usually have a lot of tables and outlets and also typically the wi-fi is pretty good but shh we're in a library i gotta be quiet so it's been a bit of a stressful day um we took the van in had the service some services done and they were looking at the brakes and we knew the initial services we took it in for would be a few hundred dollars or about nine hundred dollars or so um but they're saying that the brakes are in worse condition than uh, we were expecting and wanting to replace recommending to replace a lot of the parts um, and it's looking at thousands of dollars which we were not ready for today <laughs> so we're actually going to do what we said we're not gonna do and don't like doing and we're gonna take it to the Mercedes dealership tomorrow morning and have them take a look at it because I called them and they said that uh, they were quoting me prices that were much cheaper than what this place was saying so um, that's kind of a weird concept but that's kind of our next step right now is take it to Mercedes in the morning have them look at it and, uh, and we'll go from there We just showed up at Mercedes. We, Like I said, we do not like coming here, but we're hopeful that there's just a 1% chance that we can get some of this covered. And so we're gonna wait here while they take a look at it, but we heard that at least there's free coffee and snacks, so there's that. Mm -hmm. made it out of the dealership alive and it actually went better than we expected. Shockingly, Mercedes ended up recommending way less to get done on the brakes than the other place did. Mercedes said just to get the front brakes done because that was the most dire and most important thing for safety, whereas the other place took more of a cautious approach knowing we're going to Alaska and suggested things that we will definitely need to get done at some point, but we feel very confident we can get there and back just fine and we'll tackle them later, hopefully back in Texas where my dad can help us and we can save a bunch on labor costs. But we ended up saving $4,000 today. Woo Woo. Oh man, we were so stressed out yesterday. It was going to be so expensive, so we're very happy about that. We'll figure out the other stuff later, but for now we feel good about getting to Alaska and we can officially check van maintenance off the list 
We're now headed to go get our sweet little Kona because we ended up having to board her last night unexpectedly just because of how early we had to get to the shop this morning. And we just want to say thank you to Mercedes for getting us in so last minute, being very helpful, answering our questions. We are, uh, we will take back the things we said about you earlier. <laughs> Today we've got a handful of errands to run and some tasks to complete for both us and Kona. Nothing crazy or really that exciting, but it's just a few things to make sure we're ready for the drive and to enter Canada. And first up, we are making a food box. We hear that things are more expensive in Alaska and we'll be driving through some more remote areas where we may not have as many good grocery store options. So we wanted to have a box of non-perishable food items on hand to kind of get us through those longer drives in more remote spots. We always joke that we need a big emergency hanger box in the van anyway to help us out when we're getting a little bit hangry. So this is gonna be it. Really the only spot in the van where we have space to keep this box is right back here. This is where our feet goes when we're working at the table here and right behind Kona's bed. It's not very ideal to be losing this space, but like I said, it's the only spot we can really put it. So I'm gonna measure out this space and then we're gonna go to a store, hopefully find a big plastic bin that'll fit just perfect snug right in this spot. We're going to head to a few stores to buy the box and a bunch of food items. And since most stores don't allow you to film, we'll show you what we got when we get back. As you can see, we have quite the spread of snacks. We got some oil, some spices, just a bunch of things that we think we'll need on our way up to Alaska and in Alaska. And man, our friends took us to Costco because they have a membership and we don't have one anymore. And we found some amazing looking snacks that we've never heard of before. It's gonna be very hard not to eat all of these in like the next week or so, because we're so excited about these. We've already broken into these guys and they are very, very good. Now, the real test is will it all fit in the box we bought? And will the box fit under the table? That is perfect. Boom. Wow. Next up, we picked up a bunch of goodies that we ordered through Amazon and we picked it up at a Whole Foods counter. And first up, we have a portable charger. We have a couple of these already, but they're kind of getting old and they aren't really working as well. But these are really good for backpacking um and just anytime we need to charge something if we're low on power in the van next up this is i believe this is the tire tire patch, tire patch deal kona's really interested in this one let's see what it looks like boom so this is if we get a flat this will kind of hopefully fix us until we can get to a tire shop and well, we have a spare tire so we can switch it out or if we need to get a new tire, yada yada, this is a tire flat fix. <coughs> so if you didn't know, the state bird of Alaska is actually the mosquito. <laughs> Not officially, but unofficially. So we got this thing, it's a thermocell. So it's a mosquito repellent. So there's these little cartridges you put in here and this basically, I guess, warms it up, heats it up and it emits um like a, a scent or like a some kind of chemical into the air that you know repels the mosquitoes and creates like a 15 foot zone all around you so we can be mosquito free so we'll have this we'll have a, a bug net over our face long sleeves mosquitoes won't stand a chance we have heard mixed things on if this works or not but we figure we'll give it a shot and we'll see and if not i guarantee you we can find more mosquito repellent things in alaska and this isn't really for Alaska, but we use this on just about every hike. This is a Camelback Reservoir. Um, we noticed on one of ours, like where the straw connects to the bottom of it, like right in there, it was like very, very lightly leaking. So I had to get a new one so we can always stay hydrated. Time to go get that money, you know what I'm saying? I do not have Canadian money on hand. Well, you can order it online um, and they can like deliver it to whatever branch you want. She said one branch down the road had some last time they checked, but they never pick up the phone when you call, so no. I got the goods. <laughs> 
After our failed Bank of America attempt, we looked at some other places to go to and we came to Currency Exchange International in the Alderwood Mall in North Seattle. And for a $3 fee, we were able to get some Canadian dollar bills. Look at their dollar bills, they're just so nice. Fun fact for you, rabies is very rare in Canada and all dogs entering Canada must have the rabies vaccine. So we just got Kona's vaccination records printed that way in case they ask us at the border, we have it on hand. I don't think they've ever asked us before, but we just always try to keep it in our vehicle just in case. For our final errand of the day, we went to Kona's favorite store, the pet store, to get her some more dog food and some treats. If you have a dog, you probably know that switching up their food often can make their stomach upset, so we wanted to stock up on food that she knows and loves to at least get us to Anchorage where we can probably buy more. A couple things to know though about taking dog food over the Canadian border, it has to be in its commercial packaging, so you can't just put it in some sort of bin. It has to be in its original packaging. Also, you can only bring up to 44 pounds, which is a lot of dog food, so that's probably not an issue. So that's our final errand of the day. We mostly had success. We didn't accomplish one thing, but overall it was pretty successful. One big tip we've read about driving to Alaska is to have extra fuel handy. We probably won't need it, but we will be driving some more remote stretches and we hear that gas stations aren't always open 24 seven. So we just want to have it as a good precaution. The problem is we have nowhere to put it on the outside of our van and we obviously don't want to store fuel inside of the van for obvious fume reasons. We have spent hours and months and many phone calls to my dad trying to figure out the best way to attach fuel canisters to the van without spending over a thousand dollars because like I said we probably aren't even going to need them in the end. Our original plan was to get a hitch receiver to put here and then get a basket and then strap the fuel cans into the basket. The problem with that was we would have to take it off every time if we wanted to open the back doors which is how we put water in the van and then put it back on and that was just going to be a pain. We don't have a roof rack that we can attach anything to and we don't want to bolt anything directly to the van so we found these fuel canisters called roto packs. They're only two gallons which we would like more but it is what it is but they're thinner and modular and our plan is to attach them to the ladder here. Our plan is to attach one right here and then hopefully right here and our concern with this was that they were going to stick out too much and that could be a hazard but the ladder luckily curves in towards the top so if we attach them to the top it shouldn't be a problem. We measured the side mirror here and it sticks out about nine and a half inches and once these are up there it shouldn't stick out any further. So how this works is this is the locking attachment okay so it'll go through the fuel canister right here and then twist this actually line that up and then start twisting this one down so that it's tightening in here and once we get it pretty snug goes right in there like that and then we have a lock right here that we can lock up and no one can undo this so with that attachment for the roto packs we have this backing plate here that we're basically it has four holes in it on the corners and then it'll attach right in there so I bought a yoga mat and I cut some little strips here because this would be right up against like metal to metal with the, the ladder. So if I put this here, I'm hoping that it'll help not scratch the ladder. Shout out to our friends Allison and Jared for not only letting us work on the van at their house, but also letting us ship a million things to their house. Truth. All right, it's on there. All right, we got the first one up there. I think it looks pretty cool. It makes it more of an adventure van, but we're waiting for our one more part to come in so we can attach the other fuel can up here. So we're gonna insert a really cool snappy transition right here. Speaking of, might be coming in the mailbox right now. Literally two seconds later. <laughs> <Shh, shh. 
every video we share and every adventure we have takes many, many, many hours of researching and planning. And to be honest, ever since we left Texas in January, we've been so focused on just making sure the next adventure is planned that we haven't had much time to think very far into the future. So we have not planned the drive up through British Columbia and Yukon to Alaska at all. There are different routes you can take, a lot of different stops, there's a lot to know. So our goal today is to plan it all out and to figure out where we're going to sleep at night, where we'll get fuel, where we'll get water, any hikes we want to do or sites we want to see. And to do that, we're using this guy right here, the Mile Post, which is said to be the Bible of North Country travel since 1949. This is the 2021 version, so it's not the most up-to-date. I got it for Adam for his birthday in November thinking, Oh, we'll be planning so far in advance and here we are leaving in a few days to go to Canada and we haven't planned any of it. So this book is pretty crazy. It is 600 something pages. It has a lot of info. It's a mile by mile guide to the routes up to Alaska as well as in Alaska. I personally find this to be extremely overwhelming. Um, many people swear by this book. I don't know. So far I find it to be more overwhelming than helpful, but I'm going to give it a chance. But it has info on campsites, it has different route options and maps and attractions, so it has a ton of information. It's just sifting through it that's hard. So today we're going to be using this as well as good old fashioned Google and come up with a plan. So I think we're pretty set on going up this way. Doesn't look like there's a ton to do in that stretch, so maybe we just kind of book it through that area so we can get to the next spot quicker. That one blog said they saw like 17 bears in one day. I know, I hope that's us. So to help us get organized, we created this Google Sheet to help us plan each day. And so we have a tab for each day, and on each tab we have the date will be there, all the places we want to stop, how long it'll take to go between places, and then a little bit of notes for each stop. We also have some camping options that we wrote down, and then we have fuel options and water options. And we wrote those two down because we know we're not going to need fuel and water every day, but it'll be nice to know where we can go if we do need it. We have a pretty good plan for our route now, at least better than we did a few hours ago. We do still have a lot more details to fill in, but our route going up, we're gonna take the Alaska Highway just because we wanna get that quintessential driving to Alaska experience and see the mile marker zero and all the other fun stuff along the way. And then on the way down, we're gonna take the Cassier Highway, which many people say that's a more scenic route to go. So if you have any suggestions for either of those routes, please let us know. But first, we have a bunch of adventures planned in the more southern part of British Columbia. And in our next video, we are officially crossing into Canada. You want to go to Canada? You want to go to Canada? You want to go to Canada? Mm. Some poutine. Ooh, get some poutine. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs>